Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome, folks. I'm Jonathan, the appliance dude here at Curto's in Westchester County. I'm not actually at Curto's, though I am in Westchester County right now. We're kicking it out fresco style today. I've taken the party outdoors to talk about grills, particularly my best new little friend over here, the KJ23, otherwise known as the Kamado Joe Classic. Yes, this grill will smoke any gas grill out there, and I've got the test to prove it. Um, lump hardwood charcoal is what gets the party started. 15 minutes and we're ready to cook. I wanted to talk about probably the dish that I have made the most this summer on the Kamado, um, and that is uh, beautiful, thick, juicy, uh, prime grade ribeye steaks. I've done them all different ways. Um, I've even got some video clips and uh, some, some, some photos of me cooking them caveman style, which is directly on the embers. Okay, thank you to Adam Perry Lang uh, for that idea. And Steve Reichlin also was a little bit of an influence on that. Um, and uh, um, the ribeye has just been absolutely fantastic. I mean, basically the way I dress them up, it's real simple. That's, that's my grilling, uh, you know, mantra, my technique. It's all about my philosophy. It's about keeping things really simple. I don't want to load all this flavor on there. I want, it, I want the meat, I want the fish, I want whatever I'm cooking. I want its spirit to really, um, its, its taste profile to really shine through. Um, I don't need all these uh, spices and adornments. I mean, of course, they come into play at times. I'm just, you can do a long smoke. You got to do the brisket and the ribs the right way. Dress them up. But um, the ribeye is very simple. It's very, um, a little olive oil. I use this uh, Jake's Grill and Cowboy Rub, both sides, and then throw the shit onto the grill. We're done. I don't throw on all the extra salt, pepper. Um, uh, certainly don't touch the Montreal steak uh, um, um, uh, rub or flakes, or whatever the seasoning uh, on it. I mean, I'm not trying to diss that brand. I've used it a time. It's okay. But for me, I like a coffee rub. I don't, I don't, I don't use marinades also, very, very rarely. The coffee rub is what's going to give, um, you know, what they say in a, uh, barbecue vernacular, the, uh, the bark, okay? And when I make a ribeye, and I'm looking to get medium rare, about 135, 138 degrees, I'm looking for pink from side to side, and I'm looking for that bark on top. And I've achieved that most of the times that I have uh, actually used the Kamado. The first time being actually medium rare perfection, which you can see in this um, um, photo right here. Uh, I've shown this to people in the know, uh, people who own butcher shops in New York City, one of the, actually the, probably the best butcher shop in Manhattan, as well as many friends who are big time carnivores. And uh, they said that, dude, you should get it. You should get that piece on a T-shirt. You achieve perfection. First time using the Kamado. I, I lucked into it. Let's. Uh, Let's call a spade a spade. But anyway, um, the way I do this with the ribeye is I want to, you know, there's a whole thing in the whole barbecue world now about reverse searing, which I have not really tried that yet. And what are you doing with a reverse sear is you're actually cooking the meat at a lower temperature first, and then you're doing your sear afterwards to finish it off. I do it the traditional way. Um, with the Kamado Joe, because of the divide and conquer system, racking system, I will have a grate down low, and I will have... Um, my uh, temperature gauge up to, you know, I mean, the way they have it rated over here, it's about 600 degrees starts, what they call steakhouse searing. I mean, I've done it at a lower temperature, probably 500, 550. Uh, to get to that, after we start the fire, the bottom, the top are wide open, let it ride. That'll get the temperature gauge moving northward. And um, when it's really hot, I will throw the ribeye on low on the lower grate, and that's two minutes aside, okay? Uh, I don't really, I'm, I'm not really trying to do the Steve Reichlin cross hatch marks and stuff like that at this point. I could give a rat's, you know what, about that. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, if I was having people over, it might be a little different story for a little bit of presentation pizzazz, but um, two minutes aside, down low for the sear, okay? And then I bring them up top to the top rack, which is still pretty close to the flame. Um, and I, the other night I did it uh, three minutes per side and then pulled it off, tented it, close to 10 minutes and a plate in the kitchen, room temperature, um, and then we cut into it. And I, you can see I, uh, 138 degrees, pretty much nailed it. I took it off, it was 125, 128, and then I let it stay because you figure things are gonna go about eight to 10 degrees while they're sitting because things are still cooking. Um, I got a beautiful bark on it. I got medium rare, it wasn't perfect, 
but um, certainly not like that first time, but pretty much edge to edge and was quite happy, it was delicious. I absolutely devoured the steak. And by the way, I got my steaks at Minnie's in Bronxville. I want to give a little bit of a, um, a, a you know, shout out to him because uh, quite frankly, I've been all around Westchester. Um, I've gotten my meats in New York City in the Bronx and Arthur Avenue. To me, Minnie's absolutely kicks ass. Um, you'll charge you a pretty penny, but it's well worth it. Um, and uh, that's basically about it. So check out what I did. If there's any questions, please hit me up, jonathanacurtis.com. Come into the showroom, talk grills. We're doing this all year round, folks. I'm not bringing shit out in May and bringing it on Labor Day. Grilling is a rite of passage. It is my passion. It's year round at Curtis. Please join us. Thank you very much. Peace out.